Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners and poisoning cases from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 34. I actually had to think then what it was, what the number was. Know, you didn't was have it? to think at all yeah, because no, 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 I no, say I it. Need to, I need to know what the number is though. <laughs> So I like it's... to know what the number is, and then go, oh yes, we've done that many. Well, we say this every week. That's exciting. That, it it's is. A... I think it's lovely that we have a childlike wonderment of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> 34, my God. I only learned that last week as a number. <laughs> so when you're in the playground, you go, I could count up to 30. And you think it's the biggest number ever. The one kid who could count to 100. They were revered like a god. I'm going to tell you an amusing anecdote now okay. about... Playground numbers. Oh. <laughs> Is it going to end well? <laughs> no, it does. It ends, well, it ends in my humiliation. Um, oh, God. Ten, well, about 15 years ago, I was working as a set designer in Guildford. I was about to say, if you, if you were trying to pull off that 10 years ago you were at a playground, no, 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 Nick. No, no, I was working as, I was working as a stage designer no. um, and I was doing a play. We had set it in a playground and I was doing sort of like hopscotch squares and things oh, nice. on uh, painting on the stage floor and like snakes with numbers on and stuff like this nice. and i would i've been there all afternoon painting away this snake that sort of wove its way around the whole stage up up all the walls and everything <laughs> right. painting all the numbers that's really cool and i finished it and then i was just standing back and the director came in a good friend of mine adam and then i just looked at it and, and i just yell i just said just fuck in the loudest word i had ever said in my life oh my god and he was like what what's wrong and then he just looked and then he just burst out laughing what was wrong i had missed out the number 15 on this snake oh no that i painted and it, it was up to like between 1 and 50 these sna- numbers on this snake that trapes all around the thing and i just missed out a number oh that is that it so i swear i thought that was building to you drawn a giant cock no, on the no. Same. I, I got, I, <laughs> and it was I, a big veiny number, and you were like, no, no. "I must have had something on my mind." <laughs> no, I missed out a number on my the giant snake, and it was. Oh, I okay, wouldn't have well, noticed that. Well, obviously I did, and I find it most annoying. But that's why you're a great set designer, and we've worked on shows together <laughs> where where I would just gone, "It's fine," and you're like, "No, no, no. that little bit in the corner, I need Not to fix the it." Not down, start again. <laughs> exactly, and that's why your sets are stunning and amazing and very beautiful. And okay, I've perhaps that wasn't them. quite as an exciting <laughs> idea as I thought it was going to be. Then, for me, it was like, "Ah, oh, Nick, you fool! What a jolly story that is." <laughs> Nobody has noticed. Well, it was funny at the time. <laughs> Just had to be there and care about numbers and children's education. Which apparently you do. It's such a bad story, Nick. No, it's good. It's good. Fine. That's the only story you're getting tonight. <laughs> okay. Once everyone's now calmed down over the... the Shut the, up. <laughs> the drama of that one. It's a good story. Shut I like up. it. Yes. How are you, Nick? Well, I was fine until now. <laughs> How has your week been, Nick? Oh, it's been fine. Any poisonings this week? Snakes, apparently. If you could see, guys, <laughs> the look on his face, it's this most beautiful mixture of, we really like that story, and a little bit of, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> now he's put his hood up. <laughs> Fine. Hood. Speaking of which, we now have hoodies in the see, merch store. It was all bad. It was all bad. <laughs> spontaneously he put his hood up but guys we do have hoodies in the merch store go check them out because it is the hoodie season snuggly snuggly you know what before we go any further nick (laughs) yes we must thank our new patreon subscribers but they're laughing at me too (laughs) fine (laughs) they love this they we're gonna do a whole episode dedicated about that snake (laughs) (laughs) wish i had pictures of it oh no do you not have pictures of it we do have some amazing pictures of nick's set which i am now (laughs) going to share his sets are phenomenal he's he's a very talented man yes well thank you so much to all you lovely people so thank you so much to Andrew Burke Claire Hossack to Maria Wilhelm Robin Winters Francis Marshall and Colette Wade you're all very delightful people very and very sexy to the poisonous cabinet welcome welcome to the deadly nightcaps and all the hilarity there's some good chats happening on Patreon as well people have been commenting on the episodes and t- someone talked about their neighbour from hell actually this week <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, that, that I was just sipping tea night. going yes, yes I want more of this this is great <laughs> continuing the love this week I actually have some shout outs as oh. well so I've got a shout out to Melanie Wood who is a huge fan of ours been such a great supporter she has had not a great six months really she's been through some awful stuff but she messaged and said every friday without fail i get excited for a new episode of the poisonous cabinet i listen to it on my hour commute to work and you two never fail to make me laugh and i feel a little more light-hearted this show is an absolute bright spot and i'm so happy to have found it i'm just a fan and i hope to keep supporting you guys in the future thank you melanie and we love you another massive shout out that's due this week 
is to the bloggess herself, Jenny Lawson. <laughs> Hello. I'm fangirling so much over this. Jenny Lawson, the bloggess, if you know, you know, she follows us. She likes the show. Hopefully she's listening right now and going, Ee! over in America. Sinead is going, Ee! as we speak. When I started reading blogs and I started getting onto social media, I followed Jenny. I followed the bloggess and because she, she's so funny and she's so witty. She's incredibly well read. She's just fantastic. And just a few years later for us to do this podcast, now that she's following us, not only shared it, but talked about us in USA today, I cannot believe. And it is high praise indeed. Jenny, we love you. Guys, follow her if you don't already. Join her book club, which is amazing. And finally, from Lolly Pops World, I literally love you guys so much. You brighten my dark mornings on the way to work and accompany me after my day is done. I feel as though I've known you guys forever. And don't even start me on your humour, okay, and your little voices you do so happy you like them basically you guys are my spirit animals yay <laughs> love you I've lolly i've never been in a spirit animal before i know and i feel like we that's, are that's, that's oh, quite jolly. people say friendship goals with us <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for your lovely shout outs if you ever want a shout out you don't have to send us nice messages but if you want a <laughs> shout out do it well nick hello are you ready to drink cocktails and talk about poison i i am i'm quite looking forward to this one or could drink poison and talk about cocktails. Why do you always do it in a weird voice? Because it mixes it up. But it sounds really weird. That's the point. I don't like it. Stop it. Do you just want me to talk in a normal I voice? A normal voice. Do you like to drink poison and talk about cocktails? Yeah, fine. Let's do it. Let's uh, get on with it. Well, should we go with the first one? Yes, I think so. Okay, good. It is Nick's story this week. Hooray, hooray, hooray. But we can't, we can't, we can't possibly tell a story without a cocktail in hand. Oh, no. And every week, our cocktails are flavoured by a secret ingredient, which is inspired by the tale that we tell. As it's Nick's story, he got to choose the secret ingredient. Yay. And the secret ingredient is... Is Geneva. 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 Very exciting. Ooh, this is a very, very exciting... It's actually a real ingredient. What, we've done like three? <laughs> <laughs> of things that are actual drinks. Of, of actual things that are actual drinks. So we've gone for Geneva. What is Geneva? Well, it is a Dutch spinach. Um, it is the precursor to gin, pretty much. It is what London Old Dry came from. Mm. So it was the, the original gin. It is the um, granddaddy of gin. The granddaddy of gin and very much still produced in, in Holland and parts of France. Back in the 16th century, I think Indeed. it was. It was yes. first developed. And that's where the expression Dutch courage comes from. It does. Dutch courage relates to gin, which was given out to people oh, in the Navy. In the sailors. In the, navy, in the yes. sailors. And you have Going Navy strength. But that all came from the Yenneva or Geneva, that they used to get that instead of gin. And then it came back to London, and then it made the London gin, some Absolutely. of which was very nice, some of which was very, very bad. Not quite. I mean, Geneva is um, not quite as junipery. Uh, no. London Dry. London Dry's got a lot more juniper um, mm. in than Geneva has. But also, Geneva is not just a base spirit mixed with botanicals. It's actually got um, sort of a, a rye malted barley thing going on. So it's basically natural spirit and botanicals, but also mixed with... Pretty much unaged whiskey. Wow! Type thing. So it's got this, yeah, malted barley rye, That's which crazy. gin doesn't have. So it's quite a con- quite a concoction. I must admit, I've never actually had before. No, it's I've... come up on so many ingredients, so many things, and I've always just substituted gin for it, London Dry, which you can. Um, which, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited! I'm yeah. so excited for this one. So with Geneva, we're not just going to drink, but apparently Geneva. a shot of that and a cold beer is the way to do it. Really? But yeah. Oh, we had so. beer last week. We do, do I still have beer left here? Uh, no. Because you threw, threw it, it out away. the window. <laughs> it's like, I'm not having this in my house. So, with Geneva. Yeah. Do you pronounce it Geneva or Geneva? Well, I pronounce it Geneva, but that's because I'm English. Um, I'm going to go Geneva. You can go Geneva. But I might be wrong on that. It's either spelled with a G or it's spelled with a J. Yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all over the place, really, isn't it? pronunciations. And... Let's go with Geneva. So, with Geneva as your inspiration, what have you come up with? Well, as I say, it is the base spirit on many entirely classic 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 things so this is a drink that is i feel going to send Sinead insane yay we are going with a martinez a martinez which is very exciting it's Ooh. one of my lovely favorite cocktails but i've only ever had it with london dry before and never with the traditional geneva so i'm looking very much looking forward to this one hurrah 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 okay so with geneva a martinez sounds very exciting can't wait to try this one it's time for us to go into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm see you in a minute see you in a bit
And we're back. Hello. Ooh, a Martinez. A yes. Martinez. Looks very, very sexy. So it's it's kind of, it's, um it's I'm going to say brown, but it's, it's another brown drink. It's another brown drink. Rust, actually rust coloured. Rust coloured. Which is a nice colour. Yep, no, I'll go with that. Yes. These glasses are too small, it's annoying me. <laughs> I chose the smaller of the particular type of glasses and I was like, oh no, I got it wrong. Uh, but they're beautifully chilled. Yes, well, they did go in the freezer, so. They're yeah, very nice. Okay, talk us through it, Nick. Right, so, Martinez. Classic, classic, classic. Mm-hmm. So we have mm-hmm. Geneva. Yeah. We have a sweet vermouth. Ooh. We have a dry vermouth. Ooh. We have a, a Cointreau. Ooh. And uh, Angostura bitters. Ooh. ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, dip, 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 so that's dip, it. Dip, so dip, it's dip, another dip. one with no citrus or any sort of bulking agent. <laughs> agent. I'm trying to think of the word. It's, it's mixer. Just, it's just your mixer. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> bulking agent. Bulking agent. <laughs> Has no gum in it. Yes. Or powder. That's, that's all those mixers are. They just get in the way of the booze. <laughs> this is just pure booze. I'm just pure going booze. to go slightly so, mad. Sinead is going to go slightly mad on this one. Well, I think we should have a sip first and then I shall tell you all about it. I'm very excited. And we are going to do a little taste of the Geneva at the end of this episode, but we'll film it. But yeah, let's dive in yeah. and try the Martinez. Merry Cheers. Christmas. Ooh. Mm. No, I think that's absolutely lovely. Oh, I like lovely. it. I like it. Oh, it's it's interesting, though. But you can certainly tell the difference. Yes, with um, the Hennever. Yeah, yeah, you can certainly. There is that sort of slightly whiskey-ish yeah. sort of hint in there. That is that sort lovely. That sort of and that is absolutely lovely. That's um, so nice. We have some cocktails which we taste and go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, all of it ticks the boxes. This is, it's almost like, it's new, it's exciting, but it's slightly dangerous, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it's new, it's not new at all, it's incredibly old. Incredibly um, old. This is believed to be where the martini comes from. Really? This drink is, is the predecessor of the martini. Well, I can see that. So before this, you had the Manhattan. Pretty much the same as this, but bourbon rather than gin. So we're saying the, the Martinez has, is an evolution of the so Martini you, 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 and then the Manhattan. You have Manhattan, Martinez, Martini. Oh, really? So, yeah, so Manhattan being the oldest of these drinks. Which is bourbon and sweet which vermouth? Which is bur- bourbon, sweet vermouth and a dash of bitters sometimes. And that's it. Um, the Martinez, which basically replaces the bourbon with the Geneva and adds some dry vermouth in there as well mm. and then the the martini which takes out the bourbon yeah. and, the, and the sweet vermouth and leaves <laughs> you with the with the, the oh, and the, oh and i the like the evolution vermouth. so it is a complete that's so yeah the martini is believed to come from from this drink first one with this was in around about 1860 and then the martini comes along around about 1910 mm. sort of thing when it was really became really popular so 1900s so yeah so i mean it's a, it's an, as classic as you can get in the in the world of cocktails i'd never i had no idea it was um, that old actually. Oh, yes. Yes, yes 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 i think that is up there that cut with one of the most remarkable we've had on this uh, yeah, show absolutely that's blowing me away yeah as um, in that it's not just surprisingly lovely as in like oh what well, someone mashed a load of ingredients together in a bar one day and called it a thing but it just works all those God. things just balance so well it's it's a damn good drink it works for me highly recommend people trying this and the Geneva makes such a difference i'm surprised how much of a difference it makes yeah that is mind-blowing um, that the the taste of the Geneva in there feels a little bit like there's a touch of rye yeah. in there gin has much more cleaner botanical yeah, behind absolutely. it it hasn't got, got that rye sort of no behind you, it it's yeah junipers much, citrus yeah. uh angelica rue and all of those sorts of things so it's much becomes much cleaner and sort of yeah. a bit more violent in many other ways uh, yeah it's oh a, my god it's, it's a so fantastic nice. drink so i really recommend it's not i mean i have to say it's not horrendously cheap no the bottle of Geneva i've got a 70 centiliter one here that i bought off amazon was 35 pounds don't know what that is in dollars sorry but you don't drink it by the gallon it's going to sit in your cupboard and you're going to use it for some really special drinks well as we've all as we've always said there are certain drinks that we'd say go out and buy and invest in there are some ones that aren't going to break the bank to make up your poisonous cabinet but some things you need to shout out on Budget well. If you're not going to build up the cabinet, if you're not going to use these things, just go and find a really good cocktail bar. Or if you're traveling, if you're going to some special occasion, you end up in a really good mixologist thing. We've given you the list of things to give to the bartender. <laughs> and I'm, so I nice. am so sorry, cockeyed bastard and Chris and everyone who are yet again probably going, fuck, <laughs> of the things they have to buy, would say that that is in for Christmas. Christmas is coming up. Get someone yeah. to get you a bottle of that. We're going to try it, as I said, later on, and we'll post a video of us actually trying it neat it's mind-blowing people <laughs> I, I want to talk about it for a long time <laughs> it's a proper proper cocktail it's oh, really, oh it's, it's so cocktail. exciting yay 
Okay, Martinez, great cocktail and a great version of it. Thank you so much, Nick. I'm loved up now. I'm just so happy. <laughs> it does. It makes you smile. It, it really does. does. It it, I'm smile. so it's, happy. Um, it's really weird. <laughs> and as a gin aficionado as I am, I'm very delighted to try Geneva, yeah. or Geneva as I keep calling it, which is just going more into yeah. oh, an Eastern European accent, which does not belong to this. But with our Martinez, Martinez. plural, firmly in hand, is it time for a story, Nick? It's time for a story. Yeah. It's time for an exciting story. We start this week's story in the city of Liege in Belgium. Liege? Liege. My Liege. In the very, very fancy office of police commissioner Honor Leblanc. Honor Leblanc. Honor Leblanc. Honor yeah. the White. Apparently so. Oh, that nice. Is, that is his name. He's amazing. Police commissioner. Love him already. Um, a death report sits on his desk. <gasps> An old woman has died. Cute indigestion says the report. Nothing remarkable about that, he thinks. Yes, there is. Just one of many deaths across the city <laughs> that it just happens. He's a shit police officer. Well, I mean, I think it is not an uncommon cause of death at the time. We're not talking now. We are talking okay. a few years back. Oh, 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 it's not now. It's not now. It's not now. Right, okay, good. I was worried. But potentially some Gaviscon would have sorted out the whole problem as soon as he sees the name of the nurse who signed this death certificate Mm -hmm. um he knows something is not right marie alexandrine becker (gasps) he has seen this name before on another death report just filed a month before when another woman had also died of acute indigestion and a week before that another woman same cause same nurse what were they eating three women one cause of death one nurse could it all really be a coincidence i suspect not i suspect not <laughs> and the police commissioner he also suspected not he sets his top detectives go and investigate what's going on here this is not right there's Something, a lot of suspecting going, going on in the, suspecting in the going station going there's a lot of yeah. stroking their beards there's a lot of stroking mm. beards going on a lot of magnifying glass work going on <laughs> something is weird but what they find is weirder still and even more concerning very dramatic it's dramatic very dramatic. pause for Dramat- a sip of drink <laughs> Drama, drama. Drama, drama. That's enough drama. Okay. Mary Becker was born in 1877 into a poor family of farm workers. So it's not now. It's not now. (laughs) It's not now. It's 1877, which is in fact before now. Oh, thank God. Okay, good, good. When indigestion was rife, (laughs) deadly... (laughs) Swept across the lands. <laughs> so she is born into a poor family of farm workers in East Belgium. Life was hard. She worked on the farm. She worked with her parents. Mm. But she is able to get a small education. She persuades the local vicar to teach her to read and write and to do basic arithmetic, adding up, subtracting, that sort of thing. Clever girl. So she's very independent and she wants to learn and she wants to improve herself. And she becomes desperate to escape this rural life. Doing all this farming, ploughing. She's got there with a plough on her back. None of that anymore. There must be more than this provincial life. No. <laughs> she wants adventure in the great white somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> At 16, Marie leaves her family and moves to the city of Liege, uh, where she starts to work for an aunt. She has an aunt in the city who runs a rope shop. Nice. A very exciting. <laughs> I mean, I'm supposing the rope was in much higher demand than it is Rope is in demand. How many rope shops do you see now? I will tell you where there is a rope manufacturer in Chatham Dockyards. Yes, that's a rope manufacturer. She works in a shop on the high street selling rope. (laughs) Yeah, okay, fair enough. (laughs) I mean, in the dockyard, they have to make... It's huge, the place. It's amazing. You can visit it. I've seen it. It's very boring. It's very boring. It's very boring. But it's remarkable how much rope that's in there. Yes. There's a shop going, money for bits of old rope. Money for old rope. Money for old rope. Yes. She literally was taking money for old rope. I think she was selling new rope. Nope, shiny, 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 none shiny. of that old rope for no, you. No, no. <laughs> look at the, look at the quality. Look at the plumage. <laughs> the plumage on the rope. She was selling parrots disguised as rope. It was right, a okay. shady, shady business. She was weaving parrots into rope. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy that. Working in the rope shop. And she very much enjoys her new freedoms. She's now in the city. Lots of hustle and bustle. Lots of things going on. Nice. Much better than being stuck on a farm, looking at cows. She, she <sighs> Just has looking a, at cows. She loved, what, what else do you do on a farm? Work. Cows. When you're when you're not working, what well, else? You, is you there just go to? outside and look at the cow for a bit because there's no yeah. TV. Well, exactly. There's no, there's no TV. There's no radio. There's no one to go and have a chat with. Or yeah. go outside, look at the cow. Come back in again. Go to bed. Go Talk to work. about how you looked at the cow. Talk about how you looked at the cow. <laughs> That's all you do. Nice. But in the city, no cows. Much more excitement. And this is where she seems to have developed. Her taste for Geneva. Yay! Working in the city, working in the shop. I mean, I would love to think that she had a selection of tasty cocktails, but I feel potentially it wasn't. It might have been slightly more shots of cheap stuff. Well, 
it was uncommon for people to come in and you would maybe give them a, a dram well, or a exactly shot or something. Exactly so. I mean, and it was written that she used to enjoy a drink or two with, with clients at the shop. Which is um, not tempt the people in. Tempt the people in. And I, also celebrate those exciting rope sales. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I, I mean, I will go into any shop that's standing outside going drop of gin. Exactly. I, mean, oh, I don't yeah. care what the fuck you're selling. I'm yeah, in there. I'm buying it. Talk so. to me about it for hours. Maybe she yeah. was just there trying to flog Geneva because it was a rope shop and no one was coming <laughs> in. In 1900, she is 21 and she starts an apprenticeship at a sewing shop. She's moved away from rope. There's no future in rope. I'm going to go sewing. Small bits of rope. Tiny, tiny ropes. Tiny, 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 tiny ropes. <laughs> Amory loves her job. She's great at it. Um, she's lively and jolly. She's really popular with the male customers. Oh, oh, oh really? There's one quote that reads, she offered us something to drink. And if we wanted to go further, she never said no. And for <laughs> no money! <laughs> what? I mean, it, it, I mean, it seems a leap from enjoying a drink to sex with random customers in a sewing shop. <laughs> It is um, extreme. I like, I like the way the guys kind of went, and, and if she wanted to, and if she wanted to go further, it was fine. And for no and money, money. But what other shops were they going well, to? Uh, right. <laughs> Down mean, at the sandwich shop. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I do a lot of sewing myself, and and I go to a sewing shop a lot, and never once have I been offered a sort of gin or casual sex. Oh, for God's sake! I'm going to the wrong sewing shop. It's very upsetting. Maybe you need to give a signal of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> you say I've been to the rope shop, and I have some rope that you might. Li- I'm, I'm going too far. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just getting weird. <laughs> I think look, but, she was in there. She was having a drink. She, she was, was having she a she was having the grand time. Shop, she was fine. having a grand time. It's 1905, and she is high, flying high. Nice. She's gone from saleswoman in the sewing shop to managing a large fashion store. Oh, she's a fashion woman. Oh, she oh she is. She is truly a fashion woman. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, she she owns her own home. She's doing that well. She frequently visits wealthy socialites to give sort of dispense fashion and style advice on the the latest trends from Paris and things like this so is she coco chanel well in she Belgium? she absolutely knows she's up to date with the latest latest things oh she's fancy oh she's she's very fancy she, during one of these meetings she meets charles becker and falls head over heels in love mm. charles works for his family business family runs a, a sawmill very successfully Good trade. um so he works with his father and his brother and they seem to be quite the match he's a successful businessman she's obviously she started off as this poor farm worker she's worked her way up she now Mm -hmm. owns her own home she's running a a clothing store for the wealthy people so she's doing really well for herself two pillars of industry exactly and they are quite quite the match and they are married less than a year later she moves in to live with her husband but also moves in with her father-in-law and her new brother-in-law and her brother-in-law's wife. They are all living together in a big home next to the sawmill, next to the business. And it's a, it's a large house by the sounds of it. And they, they all work in part of the industry. I mean, she's actually doing the books. But as you might imagine, living quite so closely together, it is not always happy, happy families in there. And Marie and Gustav's, her brother-in-law's wife, Leontine, they actually have huge blazing rows yeah. between these two women these two yeah these two wives trying the two to brothers, run the whole s- trying household. to run the oil exactly trying to run the house trying to outdo each other so much so that um, Charles Senior um, the father actually threatens to throw his son Charles out oh. Charles and Marie out of the house if they just do not stop this constant bickering in yeah. the home you've got two two women trying to fight for supremacy yeah I mean at this point I do actually have to make a request for all people who are ever having children Okay. In that they do not name them after themselves. I find it <laughs> far too confusing and far too difficult. So we Particularly have, if they're going to go on to commit crimes. Well, exactly. So we, <laughs> we have George Senior, George Junior. Um, one episode we had George Senior, Tall George and George Junior. And it's like, pick a different name. <laughs> there are loads out there. It's really annoying. That bit over. We're moving on. There are people listening just kind of with their kids, just like turning off the <laughs> podcast going, you should listen to another podcast that is not yes. cool. <laughs> But things are going well and business is booming and they are able to expand the business. They open a furniture factory and life gets even better. The money is pouring in. All seems well. All seems delightfully well. What could possibly go in wrong, 1912, Nick? Charles Senior dies. Natural causes, nothing suspicious, eh, eh, enough, but it allows his son, Charles Jr., to take on more responsibility. So he, he is now running things on a day-to-day basis. But as often happens, more responsibility in the office leads to less time at home. He is spending less time at home, less time with his wife. Mm. So Marie is stuck at home. She neglected. She's, she feels neglected. She's getting bored. I mean, to alleviate some of this boredom, she actually returns to her first passion of fashion. Um <laughs> 
Passion you, you just did that. I, did, I, did, I thought I, I heard that. I thought, oh, that sounds quite good. I like that. Yes. And the fashion. good thing is we're commenting on it now, yes, which makes it cooler. So she spends a lot of her spare time in in her sewing room. Have a hobby, love. Have a yeah. hobby, and she's or have a profession in her case. All these dresses from Parisian magazines that she's reading about the latest styles and stuff like that, and she's recreating them herself. Good for her. She's obviously incredibly talented, making all these fancy frocks. I, I'm 100 percent here for Marie right now. Yeah, well, just absolutely. Like, the I, woman is sexually liberated. She's been drinking. She's yeah. Absolutely. She's married well. She's designing clothes. Can I hang out with her? Well, we need, I mean, business is so good that in 1920 she opens her own boutique. Very f- boutique. fashionable street in Liege. A business flourishes. She attracts the wealthiest of clients. She's having a great time. Lovely. But she's busy there. Husband busy in the office looking at the sawmill. They see less and less and less and less of each other. 1928. Marie is out at the market buying vegetables as of one course. does. Love when those vegetables. she encounters a man who will change everything. Does he have a massive courgette? Lambert Bayer. A notorious Lothario. They flirt over the courgettes. <laughs> so you preempted my courgette. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, that's, that's what I had <laughs> oh <my> written. <laughs> why did we both go for courgette? We both there? went with courgette. Why, why didn't we go with marrow, actually? We could have gone with marrow. Because courgettes are going with more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can they can be okay, but we could have just gone for marrow. <laughs> well, we went with a courgette. They soon begin a passionate affair. <laughs> to the outside world, she is middle aged woman, proper, virtuous, respectable. She looks fabulous. She looks the fanciest of frogs. The fanciest. The biggest of hats. Um, but by night, she lives a double life: <laughs> scandal, debauchery. Very exciting. I love her. Is, I well, love exactly. Her. I mean, I want her life. I, yeah. It's <laughs> rolling around in the market. She is desperate for all the world to see this new free woman. This affair with uh, Lambert Bayer has released something within her. She is desperate for the world to see that she is a free woman. But then it's tricky with a boring businessman husband at home. No. So we're still we're talking 30s here so again divorce not a particularly it big, happens it happens it, we're it's in not Belgium, without its Catholic, problems and yeah. it's all like no nah, it's, it's not the thing you do but of course there is one way to secure the freedom and get rid of this burdensome husband really yes <gasps> i had never thought of it until i read this story what, what, what was it an overdose of digitalis swiftly does away with the husband <laughs> Digitalis! And this is the first time we've encountered Digitalis! Digitalis! Finally! <laughs> we've touched on it, hinted on it in mixtures of things, but Digitalis, one of my favourite poisons! We got there eventually. Well, we need some sort of Digitalis sound. Discord. Oh, Discord! The Digitalis Discord. The Digitalis Discord. There we go. On the death certificate, acute indigestion. Uh, what? Apparently very similar. So digitalis... Did you die from indigestion? Uh, well, you did. No, you didn't. Well, you did. But you didn't. <laughs> well, they thought you did. They were idiots. <laughs> Potentially. Was it a doctor who said it? Of course it was. <laughs> the greatest poison of them all. So digitalis, a poison that is extracted from foxgloves, is used, was used quite commonly to treat heart conditions. Um, still is. And it's still... Well, yes, indeed. In small doses, it is thought to strengthen the heart muscle and was frequently prescribed by doctors however slightly too much and you'll be dead as with many of these things a little bit a little bit that's good for you a little bit a little bit more oh no that's bad oh, no, the death, no, the no, death, no 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 that's, 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 death. that's the thing with most drugs i think well, this, this is yes. very true don't don't fuck about with yes, them just it's don't fine. take too much digital is used in many great agatha christie novels i think in appointment with death is a very, uh, very good one. With Charles out of the way, and after a suitable mourning period, of course, Marie could really come out of her shell. Five um, minutes of a morning. <laughs> oh, I know, I think a respectable time. Ten minutes. She left it at least a week. There was a week where she was inconsolable. Yeah. And then... Then, she, I mean, she loves to go dancing. <laughs> one one book I read uh, referred to her as haunting dance halls and nightclubs, wildly dancing with men half her age. <laughs> You go, you go for Do it. it. Be that bitch on the she dance floor. She has an insatiable sexual appetite. Yes. Um, she has been playing the good housewife for so long. She has got so much to make up for. <laughs> Husband's been at 
the mill. They've got no children, so no. So obviously, oh, he's he's been at the mill, and all she's been doing all day is looking at logs going through tunnels of so <laughs> She is horny. She that is woman. Abs- she's been sewing, putting needles through thread, just been euphemisms day and night. The the, the money she inherits from her husband allows her to live a lavish lifestyle. She takes another lover, the handsome Maximilian Howdy. Yes, twenty to that years name. her junior showers him with gifts and shags him senseless <laughs> <laughs> why not why the hell not is that what was written in the historic novels he, he, I, he I showered may... him with gifts and shagged him senseless <laughs> I may have added that to myself <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, these are sexy men <laughs> the affair with uh, with Lambert Byer that had kick-started Marie's liberation had lost its shine obviously yeah. at the time it was a very daring exciting thing to do but now she's free to do what she wants it's yeah. like Oh, yeah, boring now. Yeah, she was I, just beguiled by the courgettes. Exactly. And now there's younger um, men with bigger vegetables. Well, and he probably can't keep up. He can't keep up with Marie. Yeah. She's she's out and about. But it seems like he has actually fallen for her somewhat. Um, and But any hopes he had of settling down with this wealthy widow were dashed. She was dancing across the city with different a different man every night. Oh, as as is her goddamn right. Absolutely. He ain't got no ownership of her. Yeah, well, but Lambert obviously starts to annoy Marie with perhaps his possessiveness or mm. trying to con- trying to control her wild ways. And he soon goes the same way as her husband. Oh, um, out of just indigestion. a slight amount of indigestion. No, he shouldn't have had those clams. Uh, but apparently, he leaves her money in his will. So Aww. potentially, he's actually signed his own death warrant. As soon as she knows oh. that I'm going to get some cash out of this, yeah. I can continue my party lifestyle. So he's actually brought oh, so this on himself. Out come the fox gloves. Out comes the fox gloves. With these inheritances and her her modest income that she still makes from her dress shop, she's not there much. Um, <laughs> she's a proper businesswoman. For God's sake, indeed. you got the empire, you got the money. Like you run my shop, I'll design the things. Go off. She's a, she leave yeah. her alone. No, indeed. I mean, but I'm she's a saint. But I mean, her lifestyle exceeds the money that she's bringing in. She's oh, she's um... she's spending more than she she makes. Even with her the inheritance for her husband and from Lambert and the income she gets from the shop, she's still spending too much money. That's the and trouble. she cannot keep up this this lifestyle. Nights spent in dance halls and nights spent drinking Jennifer in clubs and <laughs> paying paying toy boys for sex does not <laughs> does not come cheap. <laughs> and she was known to hire a gigolo every oh, yeah. or on occasion when so required in a side story but i remember being in jamaica and seeing some people with some gigolos and they were older women and these young young very attractive men in the villa next to me <laughs> where i was staying and it was just like the most awkward breakfast i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> you would leave before breakfast well come on if you're just making money like just shagging yeah, someone enough, you're gonna get enough, the breakfast yeah. out of it yeah, i think fair, maybe, fair maybe it was awkward by the fact that i was pinned over the wall just <laughs> pretending to clean perhaps it drinking was... some gin watching them going all right <laughs> perhaps it was you staring at them that make it all work <laughs> maybe they were just having a honeymoon and i ruined they it. they were having a lovely time apart from you with your binoculars <laughs> at the wall <laughs> so she's spending the money on the gym. she's spending money her lifestyle does not come cheap in early july 1935 she visits a friend marie castado her friend becomes desperately ill so well but the caring kindly marie offers to take care of her by the end of the month marie castado is quite dead and her jewelry box is quite empty (sighs) oh that's cool but I mean, if Marie has any guilty conscience about what she was doing, she probably managed to ease it away by shagging her friend's husband on the side. Oh, God! <laughs> so, conscience, no. yes, so conscience was not oh. an issue. Oh, come on, Marie, you, d- you so, don't need to. Yeah, so she's starting to get, she was the wild, fun, exciting woman. She's starting to get into slightly creepy, crazy lady. Yeah, it's like just territory. Yeah. Nothing is more important to Marie than preserving her lifestyle and mm. making sure that she has the money to pay for it. And her success with Marie, uh, Marie Castado, has given her an idea. There are other women out there. <sighs> there are other women out there that need assistance, that need help. Who have got money. And she becomes a kindly and caring nurse. Looking after elderly rich patients. By night she tries to recapture her youth in the nightclubs of the city. um, And in the beds of young men. By day she is there talking to old ladies about their lives. And inveigling her way into 
their wills. And then as soon as that is done, in goes a few little drops of Flock's glabby goodness. <laughs> You can imagine, actually, if you're spending your day sitting with the old ladies, going, oh, please, do tell me more about your yeah, grandsons and exactly. your bowel problems. By night, she's out there just, like, dancing the Charleston out. Uh, absolutely, exactly. All the young men, and like, fl- flogging their jewels at the bar. No. She's actually brought in front of a judge to account for the high rate of mortality amongst her own her patients. Really? Oh, yep. bloody hell. Uh, there is actually suspicion already that this is, not, this is not right. But she says, my patients are old, and doesn't everyone die sooner or later? <laughs> But they have no evidence against her. They just have these numbers of going... It's fair enough. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's it's a defence. It, well, it is a defence. And it's a defence that they can't argue with. Because they've got nothing. They've got no proof <laughs> that she's done anything wrong. Other than a lot of people have so died. She, she gets off on she that. She gets case. off. She, she is released. Because you have to question what, what the fuck the prosecution go. had at that point. If they had this nothing but suspicion. Trial. This isn't a trial situation. Oh, okay. This, right, this right, is right. A, a questioning, an inquiry. Probably so, dressing it up too much. But still, yeah. they bring in going, why are these people dead? Well, they're old. They're they old. died. She's got us there. Yeah, oh, well, exactly. She's got we us there. We should have thought about this more. <laughs> yeah, on she goes on her way. Now, I mean, for anyone else, this may have acted like a bit of a wake-up call. They're, they're suspecting, should mm. I really continue with this thing? But no, 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 not not Marie. She, she does take it easier for a few months. She's, she's built up enough of a nest egg with her elderly patients to keep the drinks flowing um, and to keep the men interested. But soon the need for money is too great. But this time, rather than go back to her nursing, she returns to her dress store. She's still there, still mm. ticking along, but never earning enough to support her, her extravagant lifestyle could have lived modestly could have lived modestly yeah exactly she could have lived quite comfortably in a modest sort of way on the income but not out every night paying lavishing these men and these young lads with gifts and and cash and stuff like that like thomas rainwright yeah so so she she cannot keep this keep this up um but there's one thing that the shop does have and it it has customers it has customers uh with money Oh, oh, oh. And she turns her attention back to, to the boutique. Um, and she she arranges exciting evenings where she does fashion shows of the latest trends from nice. Paris with her wealthy clientele. But they all come in and have jeans? Exactly. They all come in, they all have a drink, and then they buy dresses and they commission things. She gets invitations to, to people's homes to, again, advise them on the latest styles from Paris mm-hmm. and all these things. At the back of the shop... They would share. They would share a share a drink. Again, a drink laced with something, something like digitalis. Oh, sweet Jesus! When the drug begins to take effect in the shop, the women become faint. They become slightly nauseous, and Marie would relieve them of their money and their jewelry. Oh, come oh, on! Please, no, uh, no. Let me help. Take <laughs> take off your fancy big fur coat. You're obviously far too hot. Take this off. This jewelry is very, very heavy. It's very heavy. Those diamonds. Let's take them off. Take them yeah, off. Yeah. Now let me help you get home. Let's take you home. Let's put you to bed. Mm. We'll we'll look after you. Don't worry. Off she goes. She escorts her victims home. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking me home. I don't know what's happened. I feel <laughs> very awful. I was just overcome by the I was fabulous just fashions. Overcome by the fancy hats and the lovely furs. It's so beautiful. And I cannot contain it. With the excitement. next day, they are found dead in bed. Yeah. Natural causes. They're old. They're old. What else happens to old people? Natural causes. Old people causes. die. Old people, people, die die. people die at the shop. People die at the shop. One day, she is sitting with a friend. Uh, when the friend jokingly, sarcastically remarks that her husband is so aggravating, so annoying, that she just wishes he would just die. Without a hint of humour, Marie turns, if you really mean that, I can supply you with a powder. It will leave no trace. And I'm sure the friend probably laughs rather nervously. And sort of, how, how jolly, how droll you are. Um, and then nothing more is said. The next day, the friend cannot shake this real unease about what what has been said and she actually goes to the police she's a shit friend she's a she's a terrible friend but maybe Um, she's a good person well there is that would you want to be a good person or a shit friend Uh, it depends on the friend well this is true (laughs) (laughs) now so we already know that the police have an interest in marie questions have been raised in this awful police department Um, who is sitting there stroking their beards the whole time but they keep dying of indigestion but before they have not been able to produce any evidence or but now they sense with this information there is an opportunity for a cunning plan um, and they set a trap okay marie's friend writes a note to marie yes she is interested she's interested in what they have spoken about and can she come to her home bring a sample and we need to make a plan why marie 
agrees to this. I don't know. She does not seem the type to sort of be overly helpful without a personal mm. without, a, without a personal gain. So why she does she... seem very self centered and very probably blown up by her own ego. Essentially, I mean, was her plan? Or let's get rid of if my she's, friends. If she's... she's got fancy jewels, so I can do something there and steal my friends' jewels. Or and if you killed that many people, you probably think it's that easy. Then oh, I can get away with it. I'll knock off your husband. Yeah. Let's move on to husbands. New stream of well, revenue. Maybe so. That's very true. True. But before she gets to her friend's home, mm-hmm. the police strike. They leap out from where they have been hiding. They okay. have been disguised as trees and post boxes and all sorts of things. <laughs> um, They're just running after nudging it. In her handbag, they find a flask of deadly digitalin, which is the prescribed name for digitalis. Digital. Uh, digitalin. Marie is arrested again. But now they know what they're looking for. They've okay. got this sample of poison. They know this is what we can search for. Therefore, we've got a we've got a lead. And they actually exhume the bodies. They exhume bodies of her Charles, her husband, her lover Bayer, several of her acquaintances, some of the customers at the shop, all get exhumed. They have all suffered from this terrible death by indigestion. But now the police want to see if they confirm poisoning. She protests hugely. No. This this digitalin is her own prescription um, is due to her heart complaint. She's got it entirely legitimately. But when she's pushed on, well, who has prescribed this? Which chemist did you go to? She cannot answer. Um... She cannot answer the question. The results from the autopsies come back with a positive test result for the same poison. Mm. Police search her home and the shop and they find jewellery and clothes that are identified as belonging to the victims. It all comes tumbling down. It all down. comes tumbling down along Ugh. with further vials of digitalis. She spends 19 months in custody oh. while they build up this case against her. And eventually, at trial, she is accused of the murder of 11 people Did and the attempted you? murder of five more. And oh. then, a, then a host of fraud and theft charges. They have an array of 10 prosecution lawyers <sighs> against her. They call 294 witnesses. Fair enough. Almost 2,000 pieces of evidence. Oh my God. Against her. I mean, they are absolutely, they are nailing their flag to this one. They're going, we are going to get you no matter what happens. Um, All right, I have thoughts, but we'll come back to it. It's fine. (laughs) I mean, witnesses report that she attends the funerals, that she's actually attended the funerals of her victims. Um, She's kneeling at gravesides, weeping hysterically. Oh, why? Why did this have to happen? That, That evening, she's out there erotic dances nightclubs okay a dozen former lovers uh, testifies that she is constantly lavishing gifts and money on them well, um, nice. well, it's nice but then it also proves that why? she has got this expenditure that she has to count oh, for very true she's very got true, yeah. she's spending this money and where is this money coming from they look at her shop books and they can see that she's not making this much money in the press she is hailed as the belgian bourgeois Oh, of course. Of course. Oh, no, 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 we yeah. like a bit of literature. Oh, is she going the Borgia yeah. or is she the Bluebeard? Yeah, exactly. Like, but no, we, we've gone for we've gone for Belgian Borgia on Belgian this one. Belgian Borgia. Oh, okay, at least it's a literature. Well, exactly. Like it. Yeah, there are a number of accounts of her trial, and but there are two very different variations that I found. Some reports say that she does not go down without a fight. <laughs> um, she contests every piece of evidence. She rages against the injustice of everything. Mm. She believes herself to be the victim of prejudice. The police obviously just don't like a woman enjoying herself, dressing well, having fun with younger men, claims that they have falsified evidence against her. One judge supposed to have asked her if they were supposed to believe that everyone else in the case is lying apart from her, to which she replies, yes. (laughs) Yes, they are. Another report, somewhat differently, claims that she makes no pretense of innocence whatsoever and that she gloats over the murders, Mm. um, gleefully describing the way that they died, saying that one looked like an angel choked with sauerkraut. (laughs) (laughs) Which is an interesting way to go. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But whichever version is true, she is found guilty on all counts. She is sentenced to death. But there is an unusual quirk of Flemish law okay. that actually says death sentences are automatically commuted to life imprisonment. This is due to a very bizarre situation in 1863. Okay. A witness at an execution went instantly insane when they saw the head of a criminal roll out of the guillotine. <laughs> and since then, any death sentences were automatically life sentences because they could not afford more insane witnesses of executions. <laughs> 
I'm not sure how true that story is, but it sounds marvellous. Health and safety gone mad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, don't let the public watch the yes, executions. There is that. Or just no more executions, because it might turn the witnesses mad. We're all against capital punishment, well, yes. obviously. <laughs> Sorry, I just went straight for that. No, don't let them in, but kill them. <laughs> kill them all, but behind kill a fence. Kill them all, yes, behind a fence. Marie is transferred to a prison in Brussels. Mm. But only four years later, she dies in 1942. The cause on her death certificate... Acute indigestion. No! <laughs> <laughs> that is the very drunken story of Marie <laughs> Alexandrine Becker. Yay! Marie Becker. <laughs> yes, requested. Requested story. Uh, yes, very indeed famous. it was. Oh, I love her. It's a fantastic story. <gasps> now, Barcelometer. How far oh, is this Barcelometer? I mean, at the beginning, very, very low. Very it gets low. a lot higher as she goes on. Though there is that bit at the end, or let's play, let's play devil's advocate, if we may, the two reports of the trial. We know how history has been turned against women. True, true. Let's just pin everything on a woman who's enjoying herself, who is successful, clearly, had yep. her own business, out shagging, out dancing, having a damn good time and enjoying a lavish lifestyle. It does seem a little bit unlikely that so many murders would be levelled against her. Maybe, you know, if it was a case of one or two, you yeah. could say, oh, the law's got it wrong. Okay, she's being she's she's being made a scapegoat, but uh, but we've got eleven and five attempted. Yeah, so I mean that's a they've lot. all crossed her path as they've well. All, yeah, I mean the amount of witnesses and the huge amount of evidence they've got does seem quite compelling. Yeah, um, against her, it's a um, shame. Which is which is a shame because she sounds like such good fun. She, she sounds like a great laugh. Yeah, by God, I wanted to go past her. <laughs> <laughs> we say this very much with the understanding that people died. Yes. You know, before it's, that, before, yes, before that, it would have been a great time. Before that, it sounds like it was a lot of fun that she was liberated and out there. But if she was killing people on the side, that, that's yeah, not that's, so great. That's not a, so great. Get a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you need to do it. There were it. no credit cards. It's <laughs> this, just this literally why all these poisonings happened. There were no credit there cards. Were no credit it was cards. just, I need men, <laughs> men lined up. Oh, it does. It, oh, I've got such pictures in my head <laughs> of that opulent lifestyle and the older, beautiful woman entertaining the toy boys, but they're only there for the money. They're, there for, they're there for the money, absolutely. And the breakfasts. They're there yes. for the money. <laughs> I was told there would be breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if I was a not a gigolo, well, a female gigolo, I'd be one hundred percent in it for the meals. <laughs> if if there was an older person who wanted to entertain me and take me out to the clubs, they're like, yes, the dancing, yes, the drinks, but will Some there sort be of breakfast? Courtesan type of courtesan, thing yes, on. yes, I'd like to think courtesan if I could. Well, I would need to have a breakdown of all the snacks that would be provided. Oh, yeah, a proper sort of hotel buffet sort of. Oh, breakfast. oh totally, totally. None, none of your continental. No, not no, having absolutely. a fucking croissant in the morning. No. I'm going down there, and and it's a repeat visit yeah, buffet. Absolutely. And yes, then I'll shag you, <laughs> and I'll I need dinner as well <laughs> with booze and. And I want Bellinis at breakfast. I mean, that's expensive. I'm going to keep someone like me in boy form, then yeah. That's, <laughs> it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a lot. You. So you can understand. She yeah. has to take desperate measures. Indeed. Don't kill and people, that obviously. You know, she took still. quite desperate measures. <laughs> um, but she had a marvellous time doing it. She did. She did. I wonder, I wonder if her fashions ever uh, were famous or... or oh, I, suppose they I know. I think they were very much like the re- reproductions of oh, Parisian right, things. Right. I don't think she did much designing of her own sort of catwalk things. It was mm. more, yeah, this is Paris fashion. We can recreate that or we can get it for you. Type thing. Oh, nice. Her rope. Like, her like, her like yes. designed rope. Yes. <laughs> what a story. Ah, oh, Marie Becker from Belgium with from a Belgium. Dutch drink. Fantastic. Uh, we're drunk now. We are. Yeah. Oh, God. One, one of those months one. has sent us both insane. Warning, people. We, we said, buy the Jennifer. Buy, make this drink. Oh, my God. I have not had dinner yet. Actually. No, neither have I. I've not had is... dinner. I've eaten well today, though, actually. I had a big lunch. So I was like, oh, I don't need dinner. I don't need dinner. And I'm I'm gone yeah, insane. It's mad. I love it. But it makes you so happy. Yes. It's, it's... not a sleepy drunk. No. It's I a want chatty to go da- drunk. I want to go dancing. Let's go dancing. Oh my God, let's go dancing. Yes, it's a happy rather than crying on the stairs yeah, kind of drunk. Absolutely. <laughs> so people, if you want to be as drunk as us, what do you think of Marie? She's an interesting one. She's not high on the bastardometer. She's an independent woman and she was just shagging and making money. What do we think of the story? Come and comment and talk to us on the social media. Have you tried Geneva? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you not know what it is? Do you need more explanation of it? Do you need a whole history of gin? 
<laughs> dictated to you because we'll do it send us suggestions of stories you want to hear particularly because it's October we want spooky stories poisoners who turned into ghosts <laughs> stories someone has sent us one we've got yes, one yes I we've... saw I saw that yes I'm, I'm that needs investigation. so grateful Roberta who sent us that we are so grateful we're going to cover it if, if it's good obviously I haven't researched it yet if there are more spooky stories from where you live from your area from different countries if you know them send them through to us we will cover them in October anything goes in October if you haven't already please leave us a review on Apple iTunes and find us on Patreon if you like what you hear today there's so much more of there's this there's so much more of this and we promise you there will be outtakes of all of the <laughs> stuff that did not make it into this episode this recording was actually about three hours long so <laughs> there's going to be a lot that's going to cut out the recipe for the martinets will be out this evening on the social media Oi. so I would definitely recommend give it a go try it with gin if you haven't got Jennifer try it with gin it's not mm. going to be as good but it's still a damn good drink while you're doing that check out the merch have a look at some exciting lovely things as Sinead said earlier we've added some new stuff to there a popular request of hoodies so I'm going to buy one myself because I quite enjoy a hoodie yeah, in the winter so yeah I'm looking forward to that so and send us your pics of drinking the Martinez wearing a hoodie classic combination um, <laughs> so enjoy we look forward to seeing it thank you so much for listening guys we have been the people inside the poisoner's cabinet we will see you next week and remember your loved ones are trying to kill you